Fishing News is brought to you by Navionics, Okuma, Yozuri, Evinrude, Lama Glass, and the Star Island Yacht Club in Montauk, New York. Hi there, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine here with this week's web video fishing forecast. I am, of course, back home after spending an amazing week up on Cape Cod with friends and family. But uh, even though I got some fishing up there while I was gone, the fishing sure did not slow down back home. And we get to all that in just a moment. Got all the reports as well as the first confirmed, multiple confirmations that is, of false albacore caught here in southern New England waters. But first up, I want to pass along word of the official schedule for public hearings from Maine through North Carolina for comment on Atlantic Striped Bass Draft Addendum 6. As we've been reporting to you in print, online, in the videos, everywhere, there's going to be changes coming in 2020 for striped bass regulations. So what you got to do now, head on over to thefisherman.com, check out the news section. You can check out the YouTube card that just popped up in the upper right hand corner of your screen. It'll take you directly to the link. But whatever you do, find out when your local hearings are scheduled to take place. Review the draft addendum and submit your comments. I don't want to hear from you. Come next season, you are complaining that you don't like how things shook out. And when I ask you, if you submit a comment, you say, no, you didn't have time. If you can't attend one of the many, many public hearings that are scheduled, and they're set for every single state except for Massachusetts, they're still finalizing, which obviously will pass along as soon as that comes out. But if you can't make one of those hearings, you still don't have an excuse because they accept comment via email or old school snail mail. So sit down, review the document, check out what they're asking, and let them know what your thoughts are on the subject. Again, head on over to fisherman.com. You can find out what happened at the August meeting in the September issue of the Fisherman Magazine, which is due out next week. Jim Hutchinson and I reviewed uh, all, the, all the happenings at the meeting, put a little recap together, talked about circle hooks, so check that out. That's one of the items being discussed. So again, fisherman.com, news section, Public hearings are scheduled for August through October. Check it out. I'm not gonna stop hitting you with this. You're gonna hear over the next two months from me. Every time there's a meeting, I'm gonna remind you. Okay, as I said, I was up on Cape Cod last week. Granted, it was a family vacation. That did not stop me from getting out and doing a little bit of fishing, as I have to do anytime I'm up there. I hit the backside Cape beaches, as always. Only got out on three nights, but I found very good action each and every outing, despite being harassed at every stop, it seemed like, from some very, very big seals. I found a steady flow of shark sightings also being reported every day. But despite my family's best efforts, we were unable to see any great whites ourselves. But hey, there's always next season. Back to the fishing though. The bass were in about the five to 15 pound class on average, with a few right around 20 pounds, give or take a pound or so. The hot lures in the week were uh, one and a half, excuse me, the large Daiwa SP minnow, the large Yosuri LC minnow, and the one and a half ounce Super Strike needlefish. Also got a few fish here and there on the old school Rebels, uh, bombers, you know, a few fish here and there, bucktails we'd throw when the bite would slow down and get into some, but consistently it was those three or three, four lures that really produced the best. Now for the most part, my buddy Chris Wall had the hot hand, at least those first two nights. He made me almost look like I was uh, not using hooks on my lure at that time, but on that final night, I finally made up for it. I got dialed in on the bite and had a blast. I will know, I was seeing tons of small to medium silver sides in the wash wherever we found fish. Didn't see any uh, sand eels around, but I gotta guess that they are there. And also interesting note, I found some hickory shad, caught a couple, which I was hoping were gonna attract some bigger bass, but at least uh, for my experience, I was unable to turn those baits being present into any larger striped bass. Although I was talking to somebody and I got word of some bigger bass up around Race Point area. And they were feeding on schools of adult Manhattan. And while I was in P-Town one of the days, I also saw schools of Atlantic mackerel spinning in and out of the harbor. So there's a lot of bait up there. So give it a shot if you're in the area. All right, getting those false albacore that I mentioned a minute ago, and we've all been eagerly awaiting their arrival. This was the week where they finally made themselves known, as I received a couple of confirmed reports, starting off with a post on Facebook by Dick's Bait and Tackle and Oaks Bluff on Monday. They reported that angler Greg Lee boated a good-sized albie while he was fishing somewhere off of the vineyard. So there we have it, the first, at least that I've found, confirmed southern New England false albacore of the season. But it wasn't a stop right there. On Tuesday, Larry's Tackle, also out on the vineyard, posted the first confirmed shore caught albie, 
from the vineyard, really anywhere in southern New England. It was landed by Chappie Lures maker Jonathan Herman. Now you couple these catches in with the reason Panita, Bass, and Blues landed on the island, and it bodes really well for the 74th annual Martha's Vineyard Striped Bass and Bluefish Derby, which kicks off in just a couple of weeks on September 15th. Of course, you can get all the details on this tournament and all the happenings across the Northeast and beyond right now at thefisherman.com. One more note on those fall salaries. On Tuesday, I got in the afternoon an email from Mark Phillips, and he sent me a, phobia, a photo of an albie landed in Rhode Island by Marty Bothrod. Rhode Island also has loads of chub mackerel right now and some bonita being reported, uh, primarily off of Newport, as well as along South County from Point Judah through Watch Hill. I'm hearing of those albies, excuse me, bonita, being caught consistently from shore at spots like uh, the West Wall. I'm actually hoping to head up there next week myself. Charleston Breachway has had some. Uh, there was chubs around Weekapog Point this week and over at Watch Hill. Boat-wise, they're kind of spread out through that whole area. So you just run that area, you're gonna run into them. Uh, it's not just Rhode Island waters. Those chub max have been see it, sighted inside Long Island Sound too. And I got an email on Sunday from Kurt Nelson. He wanted to say that he got a mega grand slam Long Island deal of sorts over the weekend, landing an, uh, an interesting combo. He got bluefish, black sea bass, striped bass, fluke, and the aforementioned chub mackerel. This is all pretty much in and around Niantic Bay. So it just shows they are, those chubs are kind of everywhere this year, spread out fueling both uh, fun catching them, they make good bait and table fare, as well as attracting some bigger bass. Heard some bigger stripers in the Watch Hill Reef area, presumably on those chubs. Okay, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Sticking with those summer speedsters. Got an email again over the weekend, Greg Angel. He sent me a photo of a pair of Bonita that his daughter Brooke landed. Not such a big deal until you find out that she caught the two of them while she was reeling in her, her fluke rig and the pair of bones hit the high-low rig on her. So there she's reeling in hoping for some fluke and gets a pair of bonita. While most of us struggle to land just one bonita, Brooke likes to land them two at a time and makes it even more difficult by getting them on a fluke rig. So congrats right there. All right, moving on, changing gears a bit. Heading on over to Stripe Bass. Uh, like I said, there's some good fish in the Watch Hill area. Still, of course, Block Island. I've heard some mixed reports along the shoreline, but there's been a big bite in the canal, no secret. But it's been coming and going, although last week we had some good fish push in on that east-northeast wind, as so often happens. The wind kind of kicked out and the fish moved out, but didn't stop some people from getting into some good fish. And I heard from a very proud dad, Mike Malone sent me an email and he was fishing in the canal with his son, Jack, when Jack landed a pair of striped bass weighing 30 and 33 pounds on back to back cast. Now I know a lot of anglers that struggle to break the 30 pound mark every couple of seasons, let alone once in a season, or let alone multiple times in a year. And here we've got Jack banging a pair of them on consecutive casts. So congratulations to both of you, uh, obviously for the proud dad, as well as for Jack for making the, the great catch. All right, returning to our viewer submissions this week after uh, me being away last week, not being able to range them, got an email, excuse me, a video check-in from TJ Kopecki talking about what's going on in the East Bay. Thanks, Toby. Hey, I hope you had a great vacation too, Toby. Uh, you always used to say that uh, when you go away, the fishing always gets hot. And I'm sure it's hot where you're living because it's pretty hot in Mount Hope Bay and the upper Narragansett Bay. There's tons and tons of bait. There's bluefish crashing on them. There's even stripers in the mix. Uh, up to the, I've caught fish up to 26 inches inside of Mount Hope Bay, uh, up towards Swansea near the power plant in Fall River in Somerset. Uh, lots of bluefish out there, lots. You don't even need to find the birds, just driving in my boat. Uh, we saw all of the boils going on and we just got on our own little school. There were lots of boats out there. So it was pretty much, there was enough fish out there where everybody could pick their own little school and fish on them and have fun. But um, I actually caught a, keep, uh, a, a keeper striper, uh, we released it and uh, we kept a couple of bluefish, which I actually used to fish for fluke this week. And I actually did really well with a, a strip of uh, bluefish on my bucktail on the bottom underneath the Mount Hope Bridge. So uh, if you're thinking of doing that style of fishing, uh, the bluefish actually works really well uh, on the bucktail. 
So um, we also did some uh, some scup fishing and uh, we, we got into some jumbo scup too. Uh, lots of sea bass still stacked up on the bridge pylons underneath the Mahal Bridge. Uh, still waiting for some false albacore uh, or maybe even some be uh, bonito to get into the bay like they have in previous uh, years. Um, I have seen reports on the Cape that there are some false albies out there. So if you live out in that area of Massachusetts, uh, get out there and try for them. Uh, but other than that, things are only going to get better and talk season's uh, right around the corner. I know it's opened up in uh, Rhode Island August 1st, I believe. Uh, I did see some reports of some people catching tog. So, uh, hey, tight lines, but get out there and fish. There's tons of fish to catch. Excellent. Thank you very much, as always, TJ. And uh, I'm going to switch gears over now, finishing off with bottom fishing. Fisherman subscriber, you've seen this photo in the magazine a bunch of times here in the uh, videos. Alan Sheriff, good friend of mine, he said he was fishing on a pri on the private charter boat uh, in the 7Bs fleet, the Jenny B. And he did really well on some big fluke around the windmills of Block Island. Now, I'm going to get in some mixed reports off of Block uh, fluke-wise lately. Some boats are doing really well one day, not so much the next. Some are doing it on the same day. It's, it's really dialed in on where the fish happen to be sitting, but obviously Alan and the guys of the 7B got into some good fish, but nonetheless, in between those fluke bites, if you do happen to get a bit of a slowdown, black sea bass and some mega porgies are more than making up for things, but these guys obviously hit some good fluke. Congratulations there. And last up, Captain Jason Colby, a little sister charters, ran an open boat trip to Cox's Ledge this Tuesday. Um, he, he found some really good action, a big time mixed bag. Ended up with 25 keeper cod on the boat with the biggest topping on around 30 pounds. They had a pair of big flounder, a load of black sea bass, and even some pollock to top off things. He noted that they did hit a few high flyers as they were poking around, hoping for some mahi, but unfortunately, there wasn't anybody home at the stops that they made. And if you're looking to get in on some mahi, told you a minute ago we got an article coming out on the ASMFC update in September. Also got a really, really good article on late season mahi hunting, specifically tying into the Dreamboat coming out next month. It was written by former Dreamboat Fisherman, uh, Dreamboat Fishing Challenge, excuse me, Grand Champion. Vinny Deletto, so be sure to check it out. Vinny knows his stuff. We're really happy to have him writing for us now, so be sure to check that out next week. All right, well, that's a lot going on. I'm happy to be back home, I guess. <laughs> it was nice being on vacation, but nonetheless, it's good being home. Back to the regular schedule here. So as always, if you plan to head out and fish this weekend, be sure to start off your trip by visiting fisherman.com. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evan Rude, Lowrance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2019 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details now at thefisherman.com.